is the start of chapter 15, um, module 46. Um, but first, make sure you read the case study about Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, and specifically, how does the location of Chattanooga affect particulate levels? Um, so what was going on there? Um, and, you know, what shape was the valley um, that kind of led to that? And, you know, why did they have those high particulate levels, especially there? And then moving on to actual module 46, um, the major air pollutants and their sources. Um, this is a huge section. Um, so I highly recommend really reading it carefully. Um, there's a lot of information in here. Um, and pollutants are 30% of the AP test. Um, so they're extremely important, all types of pollutants, water, air, um, everything. Uh, so if we look at classifying pollutants, um, what is the Clean Air Act? So what is um, what was that for? I'm sure you can probably guess it's for clean air. Um, but what were the six original pollutants monitored? So um, they didn't include carbon dioxide um, at first. Um, they do now. But um, originally there were six. So know what six those were. And then um, if we move down to kind of those things that are monitored, um, if we look at sulfur dioxide, how does sulfur dioxide get into the atmosphere? Um, both natural and anthrop anthropogenic um, way. So human caused and natural. Um, how do they, how does it get into the atmosphere? And then uh, moving over to this table. Um, this table is extremely important. Um, I recommend knowing everything on it. Um, so all of the different types of compounds, the air um, particulates that we measure, um, and then how are they human derived? So how do they get into the atmosphere um, from humans? And then um, what are their, their effects? So how do they cause um, damage? Um, and like I said, this is extremely important. I would definitely um, be able to kind of formulate these ideas in your head um, on that table. Um, then moving down to the bottom, um, which PM, so that's particulate matter, um, can cause respiratory problems? So there's different levels based on size. Um, so which size of those particulate matters um, can affect humans, especially their respiration and respiratory? Uh, and then why do photosynthetic activity decrease with an increase in particulates? So why do particulates cause plants to not be as successful? Okay, and then moving on to the next page, 542, um, kind of down here at the bottom comes first. Um, but if we look at the photochemical oxidants, um, how do they form? So what do they form from? What exactly are photochemical oxidants? And then up here on the top, um, how does smog form? There's two things that mix. So know what two things that mix that form smog. And how does it form haze? So that's the, you know, as you drive down to Sacramento, you can sometimes not even see the buildings. Um, so how does smog form that? Like what exactly does it do? Um, and then what is photochemical smog composed of and also sulfurous smog? So there's two different types. Um, what, um, uh, you know, how do they form or what are they made out of? And then um, what does atmospheric brown cloud cause, particularly in Asia? Um, so they have a huge um, problem with this. Um, so what exactly is that and what does it cause? Um, there's several things that it causes. So look that up. And then um, this was interesting, this section about lead and other metals, especially after talking about Whiskey Town. Um, so I just put after reading this section, my guess on increase in mercury concentration in Whiskey Town um, would be directly affected probably by the car fire. So Braden, kind of like what you said, um, as far as the fire goes, um, if you think about all of the loss of um, you know, the burning around Whiskey Town, there was probably a variety of things that burned besides just um, tree matter. And tree matter does, you know, contain carbon dioxide and that can, you know, indirectly lead to mercury being released. Um, and so, yeah, my guess would probably be the car fire influenced the mercury levels, the, the spike in mercury levels in the lake. Um, and then this one, know what volatile organic pomp compounds are. So VOC, they stand for. So what is that? Um, and then what are their characteristics? So know what, how things are classified as a volatile organic compound. So what are the requirements for that? And then um, what is the difference between primary and secondary pollutants? So, um, so what is primary, what is secondary, and how do they form? And then moving over to here, um, how does ozone form and why is it considered a secondary pollutant? And ozone is not always a bad thing. Um, when is it, when is ozone good? 
So what does ozone do? Um, I think we had talked about it previously uh, as far as it is in the stratosphere and it protects us from ultraviolet radiation, but it's also really bad, especially if it's in the troposphere, which is where we live and breathe. Um, and then I just put the information, ozone is O3. Um, so they mentioned O3, especially tropospheric O3, um, which just means that it's ground level ozone, which is not good. Um, and then looking over here at the figures um, on the right, up here on page 545, um, where could, um, basically, um, what makes the most difference? So where could a city uh, make the most difference in decreasing carbon monoxide and nitrates, nitric oxides? Um, where could they make the biggest dent? So particularly the first two, that's what those graphs are for. Um, so what could they do? Um, here's where they're using, um, you know, polluting into the environment. So what um, what could they do? And it's basically reading the graph and, and understanding what the graph means. Um, and then down here at the bottom, it mentions um, NAAQS. Um, so what is that? What does it establish? Um, it has to do with the Clean Air Act, um, and it's kind of the regulations that go with it. And then moving over to page 546, um, how does high particulates affect humans? So having high particulates in the environment, um, we had a lot of experience with this this summer with the car fire. Um, you probably have looked at um, the particulate matter, um, especially if you did sports in the fall. There was a lot of days um, that the sports activities were canceled because of the AQI readings. Um, also, there was a day where we had to leave um, and go home from school early because of high particulates. Um, so how does it affect humans? And then the last thing, what areas of the world are the most polluted in regards to air? Um, so what countries in particular or, um, you know, what areas, general areas of the world and why? Why are they the most um, polluted? And that concludes Module 46.